Hi there! This is Jenna and Katie with the Customer Success Team at Time to Pet. In this video, we will be going through steps to onboard your staff members to Time to Pet. If you are a solo user, this information may not be applicable at this time. We will be covering everything from adding your staff to your Time to Pet account, to setting pay rates, to making sure they are ready to complete events for your clients. In this video, we'll be using the term staff. If your company uses independent contractors, your account can be set to show users instead of the word staff in the general staff settings of your account. The first step is to add your staff members to your Time to Pet account. Adding your staff members will automatically send an activation email that walks them through how to activate their accounts. Once they have followed the link in their email and have created a new password in the portal, they will be taken to their dashboard. They can then download the mobile app and use the same login information to log into the app. We also have a video that walks you through how to add staff members and send activation emails linked in the help article below this video. There are four different roles that can be set for users inside of your account. We offer a trainee role, a staff or user role, depending on whether you use independent contractors or employees, an office manager role, and an administrator role. You can adjust your staff member's role by going to the settings section of their profile. The trainee role is best suited for brand new hires. This role is similar to the staff role, but it is most commonly used to set trainees messages and visit reports to approval only. For example, you can configure your permissions so trainees can require approval by admins or office managers for messages, while more experienced staff in the staff role can automatically send their messages and visit reports without approval. Trainees only have access to clients they have been assigned to in the past or in the future or clients they are preferred sitters for. The staff or user role has the same permissions as the trainee role and as we mentioned earlier can be configured to allow them to send messages without approval. The staff role has access to clients they have been assigned to in the past or in the future or are, are clients they are preferred sitters for. The staff role and the trainee role only have access to the information and tools required to do their job properly. We will go over how to set up preferred sitters later in this video. The office manager role can be customized to only have access to certain things that staff and trainees can never access. For example, office managers have access to all client profiles and the company calendar. Optionally, office manager permissions can be enabled to use the private messaging feature with clients, manage scheduling, charge client cards, bulk email clients, or generate reports and manage staff. The administrator role has access to your entire Time to Pet account. Our help article on staff member access gives an overview of what a staff or trainee has access to inside of their account. This is called the staff member access help article. Once you've designated the role for each staff member in their settings, you can set permissions for each role in your main account settings. Here you can view and manage permissions for trainees, staff or users, office managers, and admins. You will notice that some of these permissions are already set by default and have a lock icon beside them. This means that they cannot be altered in time to pet. While admins do have control over essentially every function in your time to pet account, other admins besides the primary admin on the account cannot remove the primary admin. We recommend viewing our advanced webinar on notifications in our knowledge base. This is an excellent overview of how notifications work in Time to Pet. There are a few basic notification settings that we'll explain here. First, in advanced settings, notifications, you can define when your team will get notifications that they are signed up for on each of their profiles. These notifications are about clients, and notifications about schedule changes that are relevant to them. 
The staff receives notifications for setting is one of the most important settings to configure and how this is set varies by company. Some companies prefer that their staff receive notifications for clients they are scheduled for as well as clients they are preferred sitters for. Some companies prefer their sitters only get notifications for client they are preferred sitters for. And some companies prefer their staff only get notifications for clients they are scheduled for. The most common setting we see used here is staff receive notifications for only clients they are scheduled for. Remember, this setting controls when your staff will receive notifications. Which notifications your staff receive is set on each of their profiles under their notifications tab. Under the staff receive notifications for setting is another important notification setting. This is the staff must have a scheduled event for a client within setting. This value will determine when staff will get a notification regarding any client they have been assigned to and or are preferred sitter for depending on your settings above. Turning this value down to a lower number will mean staff receives a notification this number of days before they are scheduled for an event and this number of days after they are scheduled for the last event with that client. Most companies prefer to use a value between one to three days to cut down on notifications sent to their staff members. Also located in advanced settings notifications is the schedule staff notifications setting. This tool controls if staff members are sent schedule notifications always or only if the schedule change is on the current day. Again, staff schedule notifications are set on their profile. Schedule notifications include being assigned to an event, being unassigned to an event, an event they are assigned to is updated, or an event they are assigned to is deleted. The third most important staff notification in this section is the daily staff schedule emails. This tool controls when all staff members who have a scheduled event are sent their daily staff schedule email. You can also trigger this email to be sent manually by clicking the Send Staff Schedules Now button. If you tend to make staff schedule changes later in the evening, it might be a good idea to set this to very early in the morning, the day of, so your staff is receiving the most current schedule via email. Once you have decided when your staff should receive notifications, then you can set which notifications you want them to receive. You can set which notifications you want staff to receive individually on each staff member's profile. To set these individually, visit the staff member's profile and click on View Settings under their name. Then click on the Notifications tab. You can also turn on or turn off the ability for any role to manage their own notifications in your staff settings under Permissions. You can also set these notifications in bulk using the Bulk Notification Editor located in your Advanced Settings. Be sure to review our bulk notification help article for more information on using this tool. The notification diagnostics tool can be used to troubleshoot why a particular client or staff member isn't receiving certain notifications by email, text message, if this feature is enabled by your company, or push notifications on the app. This tool can be accessed from any client or staff member's quick actions menu on their profile. The Notification Center in the mobile app allows you and your team to receive push notifications for notifications found within their dashboard. For example, when a customer submits a service order request or when a pet parent updates their pet details, you will receive an alert. We've also created a central hub in the app where you and your team can easily access all of your important notifications. Clicking the bell icon in the upper right-hand corner of the app will take you to the notification center. There are two places to see everything you can receive notifications for in the mobile app. First, you can navigate to the settings section of the app and click on notifications tab and view edit everything you are noti notified about. Alternatively, you can view and edit all of your notifications, including in-app, email, and dashboard directly in your staff settings section on the Time to Pet website. Check out our help doc on the Notification Center for a complete list of all of the notifications we now support inside the Time to Pet app.
Inside the Notification Center, you will find two tabs, one for Messages and one for Notifications. The Messages tab will show you all of your client message notifications, including private messages that can only be seen by the admin team. You can also filter by unread messages only, mark all messages as read, or mark just selected messages as read. You will notice that if you click on one of these messages, you will immediately jump to the client's conversation feed in the app, where you can respond directly to your client. The Notifications tab is where you can see all of your standard notifications. For many of these notifications, you can click on them and jump directly to the correct section of the mobile app. For example, if a client updates their pet details, clicking on that notification will take you to the pet's profile within the app. For any action that isn't currently supported in the mobile app, clicking on that notification in the Notification Center will load the correct page for you on the Time to Pet mobile website. For example, we don't currently support the ability to approve a client's service order request directly from the app, but we can send you a notification of a new request through the app and you can click on that notification to immediately jump to the Time to Pet mobile website and approve the request. When setting up your services, you can also set a staff pay rate on the service in your services list. This determines how much, by default, all staff are paid for a service. If you have certain staff members that earn a different amount than the default, you can easily customize how much they earn for each service. For example, if the default value is 50% of the service cost, you might want to specify that Jane Smith earns 60% rather than the default 50%. To set a custom staff rate, navigate to the staff member's profile and click on their Rates tab. You'll see a category for the staff member's current rate next to the default rate. The default rate is the rate you set on the service in the services list. We also offer the ability to set custom client rates. If staff should be paid more for a specific client, you can set this on the Client's Rates tab. Custom client rates will override custom staff rates set on a staff member's profile. While Time to Pet does not currently have a way to track hourly pay for events, if you pay your staff hourly, you can use the time tracking feature to allow them to track their hourly shifts. And you can also use our reporting tools to generate reports on their hours worked for your payroll outside of Time to Pet. You will also want to make sure to set the staff rate to $0 for each service if you are paying using this method. We will talk more about time and mileage tracking in the next section. Time tracking and mileage tracking allows your team to clock in and out of shifts and record their mileage directly through time to pet both on the mobile app and on the desktop version of time to pet Time tracking and mileage tracking also includes reporting to help you quickly see data for the time worked and mileage driven by your staff. Lastly, this data is easy to download if you need to enter it into a payroll processor. Time tracking is designed for those pet care companies that pay their team members an hourly rate. Your staff can track all of their time in time to pet and you can then enter your information into your payroll processor to make paying your hourly employees easy. As a reminder, Time to Pet is not a payroll processor ourselves, and we do not collect employment taxes and process payments directly to your team. Mileage tracking is designed for all pet care companies that track their mileage. Mileage tracking also includes handy reports so that you and your team can quickly see your miles driven. Once you've enabled time and or mileage tracking in your staff settings, your staff members will be able to utilize these features directly from their mobile app. Although clients cannot choose who their sitter will be for their service, you can set a list of preferred sitters on the client's profile. This will ensure that anytime the client sends a schedule request, the first preferred sitter listed will default to the assigned sitter on that event. If a preferred sitter has time off or is unavailable, the next preferred sitter listed on the client's profile will become the assigned sitter for that event. You can also set do not schedule staff members on a client's profile. This is useful if you have a client who cannot work with a staff member for any specific reason.
Time to Pet allows you to set service area zip codes in your company settings that can then be added to staff profiles to indicate the areas that they are able to service. You can then use this information to view service areas for staff members on the map staff and geo schedule. The geo schedule map shows each address of each event plotted on a map as well as house icons marking the home address of each staff member. Numbered pins indicate the current order of events on each staff member's schedule. You can click a pin and Time to Pet will highlight that visit in the list of events on the right. Map staff schedule allows you to view an individual staff member's schedule plotted on a map. Directional arrows and numbered pins show the order of events on their schedule. With the service area zip codes set on staff profiles, you can also select show nearest staff on the client's profile to see where a staff member's service area is in relation to the client zip code. Now that you've added your staff members, configured their settings and permissions, and set their pay rates, it's time to let them test out Time to Pet. You'll want to make sure your staff members have downloaded the Time to Pet mobile app if they will be using it to complete events and send updates to your clients. Please note that the only way to utilize time tracking and GPS, as well as send visit report cards to clients, is by using the mobile app to complete events. You may choose to start out by scheduling fake test events with your staff members. Or you can assign them to real events with clients who have agreed to help you beta test the software. After assigning a staff member to an event, they will then be able to see this event on their schedule in the mobile app. They can also access the client's details for things like care instructions or access information for the client's address. Keep in mind that your staff members will only have access to client information for clients that they are assigned to or are marked as the preferred sitter for. Now your staff are ready to successfully complete events for all of your clients. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to our team at support at timetopet.com. As always, we appreciate you being a Time to Pet customer. Best of luck!